I'm Christine Leahy. We've got another edition of Best Thing I Heard This Week. Jim Jackson let us in on why he feels the Cavs went after Kevin Love. The question with um, Cleveland is this, is that the way, why did you get Kevin Love? Well, you got Kevin Love because he can spread the court. He can give you a solid post-up threat. And Tyrone Lue, who I played with it in um, Houston, is beginning to utilize that. Now you add Channing Frye to the mix. To me, the reason why they got that trade was for Golden State. So they can go small. It, you, you know what I mean? So they can they, they were looking towards that 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 series when they can go small, somebody that can match up against Draymond Green, somebody that can shoot the three. So now if you got Kevin Love on the court and you got Channing Fry, the court is wide open. Kyrie Irving. Now LeBron James, J.R. Smith, they can get to the basket. So I would I would continue to utilize LeBron like he is. Kyrie. I think you have to figure out ways to get him the ball on the move so he can make plays, in particular on the pick and roll. Mercedes Lewis told us what he thinks of fantasy football. Do you ever hear fans give you crap because you're on their fantasy team? Oh, yeah. How I does mean, that sit with you? <laughs> you know what? I'm able to, like, differentiate the two. So it's kind of like, you know, the first five or six years of my career, it was more, oh, Mercedes Lewis, thank you. You're scoring all these touchdowns, like, la, la, la. So now my role has changed a little bit. We got Julius Thomas in. That's right. Now I'm used more as an all-around tight end. Yeah. Blocking. You know, when the ball's thrown my way, I make my big plays. But I'm more uh, an integral piece. Like, I'm I'm doing more. So now it's like, man, I had you on my fantasy team. You didn't do anything. Well, did I get the ball thrown to me? <laughs> you know what I mean? Did you see the situation? So like, you've heard the narrative from the fans it's change. Crazy. Yeah, it, it's crazy. But at the end of the day, I think it's fun for the fans. Uh, obviously, the, the people that know football um, in its entirety, it's a little different, so the respect comes from that area. But, you know, it happens. I think it's fun for the game. And Jason Whitlock gave us his opinion on why Gronk can get away with just being Gronk. Gronk is no different than Charles Barkley. There are certain athletes and certain public figures that choose to live outside the conventional bubble sure. of how you're supposed to operate. Kanye is allowed to be kind of out there. Kanye will say things that if anybody else said them, we would just clobber. But it's Kanye, and you just kind of let him go. The reason why I'm sympathetic to Gronkowski, and again, that's not saying I agree with everything he does, but I'm sympathetic, is because I'm trying and have lived my whole life outside that bubble. There are things that I say that other journalists couldn't say and get away with. And it's because I've chosen to live a very transparent life. And he's choosing to live a very transparent life. There's risk and there's reward to that. We're living in an age, though, Colin, that authenticity is so under attack. If you're authentic, the, the PC police and the thought police are so under attack that the rest of America is like, I kind of like that. Do Donald Trump, flaws and all, at least he's authentic. It's the same thing that we like about Charles Barkley. It's the same thing we like about Gronkowski. I don't like everything that he does. If I had a kid, I don't know if I'd want him doing everything. I respect the authenticity of it, and so do a lot of people, and they're attracted to that because authenticity is being wiped out in America. This has been Best Thing I Heard This Week. Tune in weekdays at noon Eastern on FS1.